Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, investors and traders. This is Naeem Aslam, Chief Market Analyst at Evertrade, and welcome to our weekly masterclass. And in today's masterclass, of course, we will be discussing the how to trade stocks. But as always, before we do anything, I just wanted to have a confirmation from you guys that you guys can hear me loud and clear. So if you can see my screen and if you can hear me perfectly well, then please do say yes. And if you don't, then just say no. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So once again, I wanted to thank all of you guys, um, as always, for taking the time out for this particular uh, masterclass that we hold every single week. Uh, and remember, the recording of this web uh, of this webinar will be uploaded on YouTube. So if you need uh, to rewatch this recording, so please feel free to go to our YouTube channel, which I will show you in a bit to do that. But before we do anything, it is important for us to get to know each other. And so let me explain a little bit about myself. So my name, as I said earlier, is Naeem Aslam. I work as a chief market analyst at Evertrade Power to uh, th sorry, uh, at, at, at prior to ever trade, um, I have worked as a hedge fund trader for a Bank of New York Mellon, as an equity trader for Bank of America, and I've also run the research uh, department for several other companies. So at ever, um, all the research that you hear on a daily basis that is done by myself, so whether it's a video or whether it's a, it's a, it's an article that you read, uh, they are all compiled and uh, produced by myself. Now that's a little bit about myself. Now it's time for me to ask some questions about yourself. So in a series of three questions i'm gonna ask you my first question which is please say yes if you have been trading under a year okay great now for those of you who've been trading over two years please also say yes good afternoon to you as well Marmita. All right, so and the final question is please say yes if you have attended or listened to any of my previous webinars. Great, Fabrizio, Mubarak, Jennifer, Blessing K, so many people, just the names just keeps coming. Uh, Todu, thank you for uh, being loyal. And then, of course, what it does is, you know, this gives you the confirmation to ask questions. So, folks, what I really want today is a very interactive question, an interactive session. So, as we go along, uh, rather than keep listening, you guys are more than welcome to ask me any questions as we go along and as long as the questions are on the subject i will continue to answer them as we move forward now let's begin with our presentation as always the first thing first anything which we will be discussing in this particular webinar cannot be perceived as an advice if you are seeking for one please do consider consulting with your own financial advisors the full disclaimer is right in front of you now as you guys know this particular webinar uh, the master class is more about trading stocks but today is also the fomc meeting so that means the Federal Reserve will be coming out with its monetary policy minutes. And that is going to bring enormous amount of volatility in the stock market. Um, so I was thinking of running on that webinar a little bit more rather than keeping the entire webinar focused on stocks. So for those of you, so let's just have a vote. So first of all, please, um, if, if you want me to continue with the stocks, then say yes. And uh, if you think that we should switch the topic to FOMC, how to trade the FOMC, then the, you know we'll have a vote on that as well. So first, 
please say yes if you want me to continue with the master class on how to trade stocks remember we can always come back to this and then we can always you know uh, have another master class on that as well because today's event is more about the fomc all right okay so i see fair amount of interest with the people who actually want me to continue with their stocks all right now the next one please say yes if you want me to switch the master class to fomc all right okay seems like it seems like you know i think stocks people have uh, have more majority here so i think what we'll do is we will continue to focus on stocks but i will touch slightly uh, on the fomc as well just because people over here do want to hear about fomc as well and i think it is quite essential whether you are trading um, you know uh, the uh, stocks because the FOMC is really going to impact that now first of all as always um, the most important thing for you guys is to be active on Twitter and as always guys I'm gonna ask you guys to you know um, to interact with us on Twitter so you know when you are trading stock market when you're trading those stocks when you're trading those forex pairs commodities and when you see those massive moves to the upside or to the downside that is primarily driven by some fundamental news now of course you can go and read those fundamental news on various different sites such as Bloomberg CNBC Reuters Wall Street Journal but the situation is that when you will start reading those news and the fact that by the time those news uh, articles will be available, it'd be too late because that move that you're looking for or you'll be looking for would have already happened and you will probably miss that opportunity whether the stock moves up or to the down. With Twitter being on your platforms, being on your mobile phone, so you know, I'll send you the notification as that happens, so that will make it more sense for you guys. It'll help you to digest and dissect the information more quickly, rapidly, and efficiently, so you'll be able to form a more informed or educational, you know, but more informed decision based on the education or the news that you will receive. So that is why. I think Twitter is very, very, and very critical these days. So my Twitter handle is right in front of you, which is Naeem Aslam23. And for Evertrade, it is obviously Evertrade, and I'll show you that, guys, as well. And on, in addition to that, every single day, I also produce daily fundamental videos and technical videos as well. And then let me just actually show all of that for you guys, where you guys can go and find all that information. So first of all, the account which is right in front of you, this is my account. This is my handle once again. You know, so, uh, hit that fo uh, follow button if you when you are when you see that because what that will do is that will help you to get all those notifications such as over here that Trump fully plans to join presidential debate. Then you have these videos uh, going on that on a daily basis, the technical analysis videos over here as well, some motivation quotes, and of course, you know, the stock news and all of that is just on one particular platform. So it is quite an important one. Again, the Twitter handle is right over here, Naeem Aslan 23 the second part is the Evertrade's Twitter. Make sure that when you are following us on Evertrade, you follow the right account because we are a verified company on Twitter, unlike any other company. So, you know, you're following the right company over there. Again, the Evertrade is the uh, logo. Oh, the handle now in terms of Evertrade's YouTube channel, this is the channel here. You see myself, you know, standing over there and uh, the you know, producing daily live uh, hits with you guys, giving you two or three minutes flavor of the market. In addition to that, technical analysis and of course, our weekly trading QA is also you know, designed for you guys to learn everything from us uh, and, and, and give you the opportunity to ask as many questions as you can so that is quite an intriguing one you know for, uh, for you so all you got to do is type over here Eritrea 
and it will bring that up for you guys. So let me just check one more thing uh, before we continue forward. All right, okay, so you know, you will also see all the videos where we've been featured recently in terms of uh, different news circles and everything in relation to that as well. Right, now let's get back to our, effort, uh, our, our, our agenda for the day. So basically what we will be discussing today, it will be, you know, measuring the strength of the indices. So that's what we're looking at and we will look at and then measuring the sector which sectors are really, um, you know, uh, will be doing a lot more better than the other sectors. Um, and you know, that is also required and an important one for you guys to, 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 to pay attention to. And then special stocks under COVID, um, because COVID is still very much a dominant area, which is still, which is impacting the stock market. So, you know, in the streaming business, we see the Netflix, Disney, other stocks are still very much in play. In the airline sectors, we're talking about Boeing, Rolls Royce, you know, both of these two stocks are very, very interesting. In pharma, we're talking about Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Pfizer is very likely to have its COVID. Um, online retailer, Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, energy stocks been punished so badly since this uh, coronavirus and then they still haven't been able to come back. And we're talking about stocks like Chevron, Exxon, Mobile, Shell, Total. In banks, we will look at Bank of America, Citi, Barclays and Goldman Sachs. So these are the sort of stocks that we really look at. And in terms of the volatility event at 7.30 p.m. Sorry, 7 uh, p.m. BST, which is your British Standard Time, you will get your news about the FOMC. So the expectations are that the Federal Reserve will keep its monetary policy unchanged and it will keep its dovish monetary policy tone, which is more likely to help the stock market. Now. Yes, of course, this webinar is recorded, so, you know, always feel free to go back and then read on, uh, you know, rewind this and then just see that the what exactly is going on with it. Right. So now when we go on to, um, you know, when, when we go on to the markets, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to measure uh, what exactly is going on with the, the indices, which is your lagging and which is your leading, leading, leading sorry, leggers oh god leading and leggers in terms of indices so in order to do that what we're going to do first of all is we're going to bring out our indices right because that is the most important one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with our nasdaq index and the time frame that we'll be very much focused on on this one is now i'm gonna i'm gonna minimize this question uh, screen mark uh, question screen. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on the technical analysis. So we will just talk about some levels and stuff. So if you have questions, so please continue to send them and then I'll have a look at them at a later stage, right? So what we look at with respect to the NASDAQ index is, first of all, this purple line right over here, this is your 50 day moving average. As you can clearly see that we are on our daily time frame. Over here, this one, as you can see in orange, this one is your 200 day moving average. And this one over here is your two, uh, sorry, this is your 100 and this is your 200 day moving average. Clearly, what by looking at the chart, what we see is that the price which is trading over here for the NASDAQ, it is trading below its 50 day moving average because this is your 50 day moving average average and then this is where the price is trading so clearly that the price hasn't been able to break above that despite all of that agenda despite everything that we are seeing now obviously over here the price broke above that then we had a few battles back and forth now the price has broken again below the 50 day moving average and if it struggles if it continues to struggle like that then the next possibility for this particular price action is going to be to revisit it, it's two of oh, its 100 day moving average. More importantly, if we look at the price action, sorry, let me just delete that and because that went a little bit 
not how I kind of wanted to do that trend line. So I'll just erase that. So in terms of a price action, what we're really looking at is we're looking at the price to break above its downward trend line. Now, what do I mean by downward trend line? This is my downward trend line right over here by joining the lower lows. And in addition to that, we also have a little bit of a consolidation area also taking place. Now that consolidation area, my friends, are going right over here, in here, and here. This is your consolidation area. And within this consolidation area, you have right over here the first top, and you have a right over here the second top. So the double top, the two double tops have formed one over here and then one over here now obviously this is well within the consolidation zone but all what we want to establish from this particular chart is that the price is trading to the downside the price is trading below the 50-day moving average these two elements are confirming us that there is enormous amount of a selling pressure and the nasdaq which is your tech sector isn't gaining this strength. So when we talk about the fang stocks, in a bit that will mean that okay, you know they are likely to face more weakness. All right, okay. So now let's move on to the next one. Let's have a look at what the price action is telling us in re relation to the S and P 500 index. Now when I bring out the S and P 500 index, what I see first of all is that yes, okay, that we do have that downward trend line and the price is trading below that but what i also see and i cannot help to ignore that is the fact that the price called the s p price currently you know is trading near its 100 day moving average uh, sorry 50 day moving average right over here right so and it is about to break above this moving average now, of course if we get a close which is above that and the price stays above the 50 day moving average you know that would be very very positive but at the same time if the price breaks above that it will also mean that the price is going to come out of, of this downward trend line and it is going to continue its journey to the upside which will be again positive but overall the price action between between the S and P 500 and the Nasdaq looks somewhat similar because the Nasdaq also have the similar situation, but the only difference is the Nasdaq never challenged the 50-day moving average, whereas the S&P has challenged its 50-day moving average. Now, obviously, S&P 500 represents your broader market, where it's, uh, you know the, all of your sectors are there: energy, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, um, then your financials, airlines, all of those sectors are for healthcare, pharma, all of them are there. But when we compare the similar situation with respect to the Dow Jones index on the same time frame, what we see is that, okay, we can say that the, the confirmation is there, first of all, because there's, there is this trend line. But at the same time, what we are also, what we also need to pay attention to is the fact that the price has crossed above its 50-day moving average. Now, given the fact that the price has uh, has broken above its 50-day moving average, that means that the price isn't really likely to move lower from, uh, you know, if it, if it stays above that, that means that the price is really going to continue its journey to the upside. And that is the only focus for the price action from here. So obviously, what we see from the three different uh, indices is that the Dow Jones index is the strongest index right now. NASDAQ is the weakest index and the S&P is right in the middle, which is completely, completely opposite what we have seen previously. Because previously, what we saw was was that the, it was the S&P 500, uh, sorry, it was the Dow Jones, uh, the NASDAQ index, which was your most strongest index among any other index, right? So that is what we are seeing. However, you know, even though I've said this, what is quite important to know over here is also the fact that the uh, over here, we have three different things to pay attention to. First of all, is that your Nasdaq is still up 29% year to date. Your S&P is up 4% year to date. The Dow Jones, which is, which looks like, a, you know, it is gaining more momentum than the other two indices, it is down by minus 2.5%, approximately. So 
you know, despite the fact that we have all of that, you know, the, but the fact is that the price are still moving uh, to the downside. Now, does that make sense to you guys of so far? So any, any questions in relation to what I have discussed with you guys over here? Just pull out the uh, I'll, I'll just pull out the screen for you in a bit uh, see what exactly yeah okay so the people are saying that yes it makes sense uh, what we are talking about in relation to this okay now let's continue let's continue with our stock analysis and then let's see what exactly do we mean by the stocks now what do what, how can we talk about the stocks from here onward now we're going to go through all the stocks one by one but first of all we'll do one additional stock which is your tesla now obviously when we talk about tesla the price is trading over here before that the price was trading at 2000 now one may think by looking at the price action that the tesla price has crashed because tesla was trading right over here and now it is trading right over here so one will think that god this is a huge plunge in terms of a price but that is not the case this is a stock split so that is why that that that, that, that thing really has happened because if we if i bring out my bloomberg platform and i bring the tesla stock here for you guys this is this will show us the actual stock move the actual price move that how the uh tesla stock is really performing so this is the where we we're gonna we're gonna uh, gp yeah gpc candle chart so let me just bring that candle ch chart quickly for you guys so there you go so what we see in 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 in, in uh, tesla stock is that yes the trend is very much to the upside but the stock has started to trade to the downside as you can see there is a sequence of you know lower lows right over here right so there's a sequence of that but at the same time the price has also formed a symmetrical triangle pattern and that symmetrical triangle sorry let me just make this one correct why is it doing that so there you go so the price has formed this symmetrical triangle pattern and that means that the price is when, when the price forms this sort of a symmetrical triangle pattern in an upward trend it usually breaks to the upside but the fact is that the price is very much close to its 50-day moving average which is right over here as long as the price stays above that you know it doesn't come close to its to um it's a uh, hundred day moving average the 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 odds will remain strong for this particular move to continue to the upside now as for bank of america when we look at the bank of america's price move what we see with respect to the Bank of America weekly or a daily time frame is quite different. So on the daily time frame, what we see is that the price has started to move to the upside, right? So which is quite positive in terms of a Bank of America's price because price formed over here 22. Back in March, the price was trading at 17 to 18. After that, the price formed another lower low between 22 to 22 to 22.28. Now there is a new support zone with respect to Bank of America and we can draw that support zone right over here between 22.93 to 23.43. Now as long as the price stays above this one you know we have not really too much to worry about but at the same time what we also want to see sort of is the price the Bank of America's price the stock price to break above this particular zone because right now the weakness has started to creep in but in terms of your resistance level for this particular stock what we are looking at i think if you go in where the where the support zone is that support zone being over here your uh, you know your uh, your resistance is likely to be right over here which is 2630 to 2663 so i'm just going to draw the price levels for you guys for the next five minutes for all the stocks and then that's what you 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 know you guys wanted to take care of from there onwards if you wanted to trade that so right now the support
is here and the resistance is over here. Overall trend for Bank of America, when I look at it, is still very, very positive, is still very strong to the upside. And this is your trend line. And then we need the price to stay above this trend line. Now for Netflix, when I look at the Netflix chart on the daily time frame, let me just get rid of these lines because these are old lines which we don't really need anymore. What we look at is we look at the 50 day moving average. The price is still trading above the 50 day moving average, which confirms to me that this stock market is likely to continue its journey to the upside. In terms of your support level, what we really kind of wanted to do is we wanted to look and encompass the 50 day moving average area right over here. So this is your area of a price between 489 to 496. In terms of a resistance, where the price can find, you know, find some sort of a resistance, you know, I like this area of 548. Is the trend is to the upside? If that is your question, certainly trend is to the upside. And uh, there is no doubt about that. But remember, corporate earnings season is just around the corner starting from next week. So there could be a move, potential moves to the downside as well. So if that happens, then the next area of focus is going to be a 100 day moving average. Now, with respect to Amazon, when we look at Amazon on a daily time frame, clearly the price has started to lose momentum. Look how beautiful that trade was. The price retraced towards its 100 day moving average, then it moved back up. But now the price is clearly is still in a in a, in in a, in a, in a uh, in a sell off mode. And remember, this is what we had the confirmation from the NASDAQ as well. So the possibilities are really that this particular move may continue back to us here in this area. Price perhaps can find some sort of a support. But if that doesn't really happen, if the price fails to bounce back from that, then that means we need to have another backup plan from where the price can potentially find a support. So for me, that area of support remains right over here, which is between 2864 to 2939 sort of area. This is just below that 100 day moving average. But if the price breaks below that, then the next area of support is going to be this particular candle right over here where this massive rally happen now in if you are able to gather if you to cash this price in any of the support zone then you may want it to cash out in these resistance zones which i'm drawing right over here so the one potential trade could be when the price breaks above the 200 day, uh, 150 day moving average or the other potential trade is that you can go short right now and put your stop losses just right above your 50 day moving average so that could be again very very fruitful strategy now with relation to johnson and johnson again on the daily chart what we see is that the price is very much moving in a sideways pattern from here to here not much move is happening because obviously this is johnson and johnson so it is a trade is a range based trading very much so so that means that we've got to go in extreme zones and one of the extreme zone on the daily time frame is right over here and this is your resistance zone so right now the price is moving to the downside it can certainly find some support around here uh, and that price level if it finds that then the price level is going to be between 145 let's just say and if that works that, that, that can push the prices back up otherwise prices are likely to continue the journey to the downside all the way where they've drawn that resistance zone now Boeing has been in the news quite a lot lately the price is still very much under enormous amount of pressure as you can see that you know since 12th of March the price just been traveling to the downside and now it has recovered maybe less than 38 percent of that move we had this massive move for Boeing prices but now again the Boeing uh, Boeing stock is under immense pressure so what we got to do is we got to define our resistance zone our resistance line which is right over here we want the price to break above that the fact that the price is breaking below all the moving averages meaning that the price is likely to go and revisit the 140 to 146 area if it works it's great but if it doesn't then really the, the next area of support is going to be right in between these zones where this particular candle is tra uh, traded 
and that is going to be 113, which is quite far from where the price is trading, but that is the level that we're really looking at if this level fails. In terms of resistance, if the price breaks above the downward trend line, then you may not want it to take anything off the table until and unless price hits that 209 to 208 price level. Now, Goldman Sachs on the other side is also sort of a facing very troubling time and the reason for that is you know in 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 earlier this year in february the stock saw this massive sell-off but after that we have seen you know uh, we have seen a decent rebound in the price because the price recovered more than 50 percent but more recently the price has started to trade below sorry let me just delete that or maybe let's just rearrange that the price has started to trade below this downward trend line and that means that this stock is very much in battle with its moving averages and as long as this battle continues there isn't really much for this particular market to go to anywhere so what we're really looking at right now is is, is a fun potential area which is 185 to 189 but if the price breaks above these moving averages put a stop loss on today's low or yesterday's low or the day before the recent low which is right over here 195 and then let's shoot for the moon and then shooting for the moon in terms of Goldman Sachs price is really this particular resistance level because you may not want it to take anything off the table unless the price touches these particular price levels. Now, we're going to continue with a few more stocks before we call it today. I know we are over the time limit. This is your Google stock. When we look at Google, you know, again, it, it, it is your tech stock. We know that the tech index is very much under pressure. Hence, we've seen this massive sell-off for the for the for the for the Google price. Now we know why the Nasdaq is so weak because obviously there is no love for the tech stock right now. Now that, that means that where do we go from here? We know that the price couldn't hold near 50 price couldn't hold near 100 it did hold near 200 day moving average but now it seems like that the price could either revisit this area which is 1397 to all the way to let's say 1413 but if it fails to do that then the next area of support is really going to be between 1298 and right over here because this area i like it because it was an expensive rally explosive rally to the upside then the market kind of came back sorry uh, let me just readjust this line okay right over here so this area like because there was an explosive rally from here the market retested it and then again bounced sharply back up so i mean i'm, I'm hoping for the price if it comes over here that it will shoot to the to the upside the other possible trade is that you can wait for the price to break above the 100 to move an average put your stop loss in, below the previous lows and in terms of a, a resistance or profit taking it needs to be above or just below the 50 day moving average but if the price breaks above the 100 day moving average the likely chances are that it will also break above its 50 day moving average as well now question times folks let me just have a quick look if there are any questions on topic okay what if the indices are low do you go low yeah if the indices start selling off if the indices start going down then that's what you got to do how do i see my ema that this one is drawn before or below i don't know what you mean uh if you're talking about these smooth moving averages they are very easy to draw on the charts so all what you got to do with respect to, to put them on the chart is you go over here you say insert you go into indicators and then you go into trends and then you go into moving averages and when the moving averages box comes you put the period here so 200 and change the color to green keep this simple and then keep the rest of the uh, settings as default that's pretty much it all right folks so this is where we call it a day i hope this was helpful for you and happy trading good luck with everything and i will uh, speak to you guys soon then